What's going on guys? Welcome back to a new video. It's your boy Flix by Ryan. Today, what we're gonna be doing is editing up a couple of photos from my photo shoot yesterday, and I'm gonna be taking you through the process of what I do when I'm editing photos. Um, so right now, we have about 66 photos imported into the computer. I'm gonna sort through these, grab a couple of the images that I like, probably like six or so, and then I'm just gonna take you guys through that. So sit back, relax, enjoy this video, and if you do, make sure you give it one big thumbs up. All right, so. Uh, I've picked out, looks like, nine images here. I got a few that the client wanted, a few that I really liked, and we're just gonna go through and we're going to um, edit these up. So, I don't normally select them by pics, but since this video, I just wanted to have, you know, all the pics ready for, me, for us to view. So, um, I always start by adding, on the develop tab, adding some dehaze. I just feel like that really brings out the subject of the photo and makes everything dark so that it's very nice. Add some contrast. This image needs some extra exposure. Turn on the highlights. Turn on the shadows just a little bit because I really like that dark, you know, those, those dark shadows. Turn them down a little bit more. Turn on the highlights a little bit for this one. I always crop my photos as well into a four by five because a four by five is Instagram ready and that's primarily where I put all my photos. So, you know, gotta have that four by five ready to go. Sometimes I'll add white balance auto to see if I like that. In this case, I don't think I really do. I think I like the warmer or the cooler um, temperature. Maybe add a little bit of warmth. Looks like I just added 150. Um, my greens, I really like having very desaturated greens in the background. I just think that that, you know, dark green is really nice, but then we add some luminance. So it's not very saturated, but it's still bright enough. Um, depending on the image, I'll change the hue. I, sometimes I really like this green. In this case, I'm loving that green. I think the red is a little bit too bright, so we're gonna turn down the luminance of that red just a little bit. See what that blue looks like, a little bit desaturated. Maybe change the hue a little bit. I think that looks good to me. I always add a little bit of sharpening. Sometimes I'll turn down the color um, noise reduction, but you know, in this case, I think I'm loving it to be honest with you. So we're just gonna keep that and see what the profile correction makes it look like. I love that as well. So we're gonna keep that. It's honestly, ladies and gentlemen, just a, a matter of trial and error. See what you like, see what you don't like. I'll add some vibrance in there, I like that. I never add saturation. I don't like the way the saturation, because I wanna just you know saturate, desaturate the colors individually in the HSL tab. If you haven't started learning HSL, I highly recommend you do. And I don't even mess with the tone curve. So this is just how I prefer to edit the photos. Looks like I turn up the whites here, but it looks like I'm gonna turn down the highlights just a little bit more. So you can see before and after, looks great to me. And we'll just export that onto the hard drive. Move on to the next one. So. What saves me a lot, a lot, a lot of time when I'm editing is just copying from like these. You can tell that they're the same setting, just a different pose. So I'll copy the settings from the first image and move on to the second image and just paste those settings. And oftentimes that's good enough. I don't really have to edit too much, but I mean, you know, sometimes of course I will edit just a little bit to make it, you know, towards my liking a little bit more. In this case, I think we're gonna have to turn down the highlights a little bit. And I think I want to turn up the warmth on this one, just a hair. Um, maybe turn back up the highlights and turn down the whites just a hair. I think that looks really good. So see that? It's so easy. I just edited two photos in literally three minutes. Super, super simple. So I'm gonna start on this image by making it a four by five. Make sure that my subject is perfectly in the center of the frame. I really like this image because of the um, out of focus elements here. We got some stuff going on in front of her, some stuff behind her. So this, this image, I'm gonna desaturate the greens because I know that this is gonna look amazing if I do that. So desaturate those greens. Sometimes I'll even desaturate the yellows because a lot of the times the yellows are in the background here as, as well as the greens. So desaturate those a little bit. I really like those orangey yellows, as you can see here. Um, I, think maybe even desaturate these just a little bit more. And once I made these these um, yellows a little bit more orange, I kind of liked them. So I'm gonna keep those. Play around with this just a little bit. I'm liking it. Let's see what the hue looks like if I make these greens a little bit more green. 
I think in this case, I'm liking that that green color. It's very, it's very deep. It's like sort of a matte green. I don't know. I just like that, that color. So then we'll add some dehaze, 15 in this case. I always add between like 20, 25 contrast. Obviously, this guy's gonna need some exposure. Reduce the highlights, reduce the shadows. I think this one's a little bit too warm for my liking, so we're gonna make it a little bit cooler. I think that looks good to me. Turn down the blacks. Add a few whites here. All right. Increase the sharpening, the sharpness here. Profile corrections, I like that. And then a good way to bring out the subject's face is just to add a little bit of, a little bit of lighten um, to that. I always make the density like 50 because it's like a, a much more soft light. So when you paint on the face here, you can see it's not as, it's not as thick as if you had density 100. I'll show you that. See how much more like, you can see the contrast, like how much darker it is here compared to there. So that would look a lot more harsh on the face. So I always use light density here. All right, and then even if the, if the light, when you paint it on the face, oops, did I remove that? If the light looks too harsh, then what you can do is remove some of the, sorry, not the contrast, but the highlights. Turn down the highlights on that. Turn down the shadows on that. Make it a little bit more soft. It, it, it removes a lot of the harshness of the, the light and of the dodge brush. So this one, I'm gonna add a little bit of Vibra uh, vibrance, it looks really great. I like the way that green looks. And I think I'm also gonna desaturate some greens just a little bit more. Let's see, you can see before and after. I think that looks good to me. So we're gonna export that image. Once again, we're gonna copy these settings because we're moving on to another image that's within the same, within the same, um, field here, whatever. It's the same same scenery, just a different pose. Make that a four by five. It looks like it should be cropped here. A lot of times people like are bothered when, when there's like a part of the arm cut off, but it's your art. So I never stress about that stuff. As long as I think it looks good, then I think it looks good. Doesn't matter. Put some more exposure on her face. See, in this case, I think that, that cheek looks really, um... oh, see, that's why. Density is at a hundred. So under that brush, Put it down to 50. Let's add some feathering to this brush. And there we go, that's a lot softer. I like the way that looks. Honestly, in this case, I think it could go for a little bit more brightness. And when you use a low density plus feather, when you are you know, painting on the face, you can increase the, the exposure a lot more without it looking too harsh because the density is so low. So I think that looks really great. We're gonna export that frame as well. Once again, here we are, we can just throw the old settings on there. But this time, I don't really like the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is just scratch those settings and start from, start from scratch. Increase the density, increase the contrast. This one's gonna need a lot more brightness. That looks good. Decrease the, the highlights so they're not so intense. I think this one is too warm as well, so decrease the warmth here. I'm gonna crop that into a four x five. I love pretty much using four x fives because when I upload to Instagram, um, it takes up the most space when you're scrolling through the feed, so your image is taking up a lot more space than if it was a square. Um, it's all personal preference, but also if you're using a four x five, then you can catch a lot larger of an image basically and show like a lot more de different details. So that's just my personal opinion. see what we can do here. Decrease the blacks a little bit. These greens need to be desaturated and the yellows need to be desaturated. That looks wonderful. D, like uh, make the luminance less on both of these. I think that looks good. See, that's obviously that's crazy. You don't wanna have it to where it looks. I noticed it a lot um, right here. You know your luminance is too low. If this starts happening, it looks like almost like it was like a watercolor or something like that. Cannot have that, but I like the way this looks. I'm gonna use the profile corrections for the 24 to 70. Keep the sharpness where it's at. I think we could go for slightly turning down the whites and turning down 
mm, maybe let's turn up the, the highlight, or the shadows in this case. So that's before and after. Let's see what the saturation of these yellows could look like. And I think I like that. So we're gonna export that image, wonderful. Copy those settings because the next image is another one from the same scenery, just a different pose. That looks wonderful. See, that, that makes your editing process really, really quick. Some people like to do that to multiple images at a time, but me personally, I just go one image at a time because I'm not gonna, I feel like that's a waste of time if you just apply it to every single image. Just go ahead and search through the images and then add to the images that you actually like. So this one, since this, the sun's coming up from like an angle here, we wanna make her face a little bit brighter. So we wanna paint the little lighten brush on there. Let's say you could even use a little bit more in this case. Turn down the highlights because that left side of her face, we don't want it to get blown out. Looks good to me. And maybe in this case, I would crop it in a little bit more to the left. On the left side there. I think that looks really good. So I really like how her hand is out of focus. I like the pose. Uh, I like all the greenery around her. One thing I don't like is this pole. I could really, if I was nitpicky, I could edit that out in Photoshop, but it's not that important. It's um, a good image if you ask me. This one was one of her favorites when we were shooting. So we of course have to include this one in the edits. We're gonna have to straighten this one because uh, I want this shipping container is like a, like, yeah, shipping container on the, on the, uh, in the parking lot of this place that we were shooting. So we want that to be straight up and down. One thing I really find helpful is this angle brush. If you just use it in a line along something that you want straight up and down, obviously, it straightens it up perfectly for you. We also want to give a little room above her head. I think that looks good. Then we can just do the usual, add some contrast, add some dehaze. Maybe that's too much. Add some vibrance, add some exposure. That looks like it's too much. Turn down the highlights. Oops. And the exposure some more. Highlights look good. Shadows maybe you could turn up a little bit. Yeah. Turn down these whites to intense. Blacks just a little bit, give it that, you know, contrasty feel. Then we can paint on the face a little bit with this lighting brush. Looks good to me. And let's see here, because actually I see in the background this curb is not straight and that kind of bothers me. So let's see if this looks better if I use the straighten tool right there instead of with the shipping container. And actually, I think that we need to sort of meet in the middle here somewhere. Maybe like that. I think that looks good enough. So this one kind of bothers me. I don't know if I would post this one because it bothers me that the, the background is not straight on the side here. And if this was straight, then this would be at a massive angle, which would bother me as well. So I'm still gonna send this image to them because um, obviously during the shoot, she was really into this image. Um, but personally, I don't think I would post this on my Instagram page. Decrease some greens here. looks like her face could use a little bit more exposure. Turn on those highlights. Looks good. And we can, let's see, is that everything? See, that looks good to me. We can export that. Two more images here. So. Um, the whole purpose of this photo shoot was to get a self-portrait that she's going to turn into actually a canvas. Um, and this is the, the, thing, the pose that she wanted for that. It's sort of like a thinking pose. And I think we can actually make this one a square because, you know, the pose, the scenery, like the scenery is not crazy. The pose is very simple. Um, and this, this will be a good example of something that you could keep as a square. So as you do, add some contrast, add some dehaze. Add some exposure. That looks good to me. Turn down the highlights. Turn up the shadows a little bit in this one. Turn down the blacks. This is one thing that you can do when, when the image is too dark in the shadows, you can turn up the shadows and turn down the blacks and sort of get the same, same effect as just turning down the um, shadows. Turn down the whites here because it looks a little bit white over here. This one, so for a lot of people, they have really, really red lips. So you can't really play with brick walls too much. But she's wearing lipstick, so this might be a good opportunity to 
play around with the reds a little bit. We can turn them down, maybe desaturate them. I like that. It didn't really do much to the wall, but that's fine. Um, before I've, I've edited that in Photoshop, let's see what the oranges look like. I like the way that satur saturation looks. Maybe make it a little bit more. Yeah, see, we can't do that because then the face, the face and the skin starts to turn red, which we can't have that. So that's oftentimes like my biggest struggle. I love shooting with brick walls, but the issue is if you shoot with the brick wall, you have to take it into Photoshop to change the color of it, which I really don't like doing. Um, but I always love since these curbs are yellow, you can make them a little bit more orangey, which I personally think looks fantastic. In this case, it's a little bit too orange. I want that hue, but I don't want it as you know deep of a color. I think I'm gonna turn down these oranges, maybe make this even a little bit more yellow. I think that looks good. Brush to the face, a little bit of lighten. And I think this would be good if we turn down the warmth. Maybe not that much. That looks better to me. Increase the vibrance, that looks good. I think that the pants need to have a little bit less blue in them. That looks good to me. Sharpness, noise reduction, color. We can add the profile correction, see what that does. That looks fine to me. I think that her foot needs a little bit of room under it. Her head has enough room under it, uh, on top of it still. So we're good there. And maybe even turn down the yellow luminance just a little bit to make this curb a little bit more, a little bit less, you know, overexposed. So that is how I would do that one. And last but finally not least, simple smiling shot against the brick wall. First step, make it a four by five, crop it in a little bit so that it's a perfect, you know, she's in the center of the frame. She's got room above her head. This one, I'm gonna start by increasing the exposure. I always start with the contrast and the, and the dehaze because these are things that I really want and they darken the overall image. So um, when, you, when you do those first then you can adjust accordingly afterwards. So when I look at this image, it looks a little bit green to me. So what I'm gonna do is with the white balance, I'm just gonna do auto and looks a little bit too blue. So I'm gonna increase the warmth and maybe increase the pinks a little bit. I think that looks really good. Increase the exposure, decrease the highlights, a little bit too green. The thing is against this brick wall was um, some forest over on this side. So we can't, ha it's gonna be sort of reflecting onto her skin there, which we can't really have. So. What we can do is desaturate the greens. That could help a little bit. And we could increase the luminance of the greens. And we could, another way to bring sub focus into the subject is to make a radial brush around her and use the darken feature so that the focus is clearly on her. When we did this, it made her face look like the highlights are too intense. So we'll turn those down a little bit and give her a little bit of light on her face, but not too overexposed, if you feel me. So we're gonna turn up that, down the highlights a little bit more. Looks good. Um, and turn down the blacks, turn down the highlights a little bit, I mean the shadows a little bit, turn up the whites, just a hair. Vibrance, just a little bit. And profile corrections down here. I also think this could use to be rotated just a little bit. That looks good. I'll see, I think this could be cropped up. Oops. This could be cropped up a little bit. Maybe right there. That looks good to me. I'm really liking this image. This 24 to 70 is some good stuff. Let's see what else we could do. Maybe change the hue of the reds. See what that looks like. Don't like that the hue of the oranges. I like that, I like that a lot. And then we'll turn down the saturation because we can't have it affecting the skin too much. Before and after, sort of bring the image to life a little bit in post. It looks like the whites are too much. That's what I like to do. When you look at the image before and after, you sort of notice the differences that you would or, or would not like in the image. That's sort of what I did and I noticed the white was a little bit too intense. So 
yeah, so that's the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. I had a great time making this for you. And if you guys wanna see another editing process video, just let me know down in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.